Hello, and welcome to another CISSP certification study hour. Today we're going to be covering uh, domains 7 and 8 uh, and trying to get better. Uh, I'm your host, Michael Buckby. Uh, I was a CISSP and then let it lapse um, due to working on other stuff. And now I'm trying to get uh, back in shape and repass the certification exam and this is me studying for it. Um, so every week we go through some different aspects of the common body of knowledge, trying to get um, our knowledge up and together answering the questions, figuring stuff out. Um, at the end of each session, uh, our sponsor Veronis uh, sends out a Yeti mug, which is nice. Uh, keeps your coffee or whatever drink you want, hot or cold. And that's it. Um, we don't have that much because I don't think these domains are the longest um, today. So we'll see how far it goes, but as always, very happy to see uh, people, very happy to have everyone participate and try to answer questions in chat. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is uh, seven, which is, um, let's see, what are you? Seven is um, security operations. Very fun, okay, security operations, okay. A device that uses passive listening devices. All right, this is flipped. It's acoustic sensors. All right. These are the fun security operations. Um, bugs in your house. All right. Accounts that are assigned only to named individuals that require administrative access to the system to perform maintenance activities and should be different and separate from a user's normal account. Is this system accounts? I don't know. Couple nice people in chat, Dane Smith and uh, 8-Bit Oni. Oh, 8-Bit Oni's back. All right, I think there's a system accounts, administrator accounts. Signed only to named individuals that require administrative access to the system. I guess the named individuals is what I messed up. Hey. For maintenance activities be different and separate from users normal account. Well, I suppose system accounts should be different as well, but they're probably not assigned to just named individuals. Okay. Devices that use a magnetic field or mechanical contact to determine if an alarm signal is initiated. Magnetic field. This is a tripwire. Tripwire. Balanced magnetic switch. That's a good thing to know. Balanced magnetic switch mechanical contact I guess I don't a mechanical contact wouldn't be a magnetic switch but okay all right the who what when where and how the evidence was handled from its identification through its entire life cycle which ends with the destruction permanent archiving or returning to the owner little typo here with OT um, the who what evidence was handled um, so I would think this is evidence life cycle, um, but let's see here. Chain of custody. Uh, who, what, when, where, and how the evidence was handled. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Thinking of Faraday cage. All right. A lock controlled by touchscreen, typically five to ten digits, that when pushed in the right combination, the lock will release and allow entry. I think a combination lock, com touchscreen, digital combination lock, cipher lock. Sounds like someone from the Matrix. Doesn't sound like an actual security thing. Cipher lock. Okay. Pin pad. Pin pad's a good guess. But no one said cipher lock. Today we all lose at the matrix. All right. A discipline for evaluating, coordinating, approving, or disproving, and implementing changes in artifacts that are used to construct and maintain software systems. Uh, systems administration? I don't know. Here, one second. I'm going to move the chat window just so I can see your answers better. Okay. Evaluating growing. admin administration systems administration change request 
Well, configuration management. Change request was better than my guess. So I guess change management, change request. Hmm. Configuration management. We're getting closer though. These answers are getting better. So. A suite of technologies aimed at stemming the loss of sensitive information that occurs in the enterprise. Um, because of the delay in the stream, I'm gonna give everyone a couple seconds to answer. I could hum the Jeopardy music, but I don't know if that would begin. Data protection? That's what Veronis does, data protection. Yeah, I'm with Charles. I was thinking this was DLP. Data leak prevention. I would have said data loss prevention, but I guess either way, it's still DLP. See, the loss of sensitive information is what I think makes this, you know, DLP and not just data protection, but practice of monitoring and potentially restricting the flow of information outbound from one network to another. Um, monitoring and potentially restricting the flow. So it's the practice, data, data inspection? Yeah, tab, I would think it was a firewall. I think the device is the firewall, but I, I bet this, that's too sensible of an answer. <laughs> like this is always going for like the management answer. All right, I think this is also DLP. Egress filtering instead of ingress filtering. Hmm. DPL, definitely not DPL. Or DPI, dots per inch. That's just, that's just all wrong. Um, but yeah, egress filtering via, uh, uh, outbound firewall or packet inspection. That was probably deep packet inspection, what Charles was saying. Um, okay. All right. A focused infrared light beam is projected from an emitter and bounced off of a reflector that is placed on the other side of the detection area. Um, so this is, see Charles, you should have just gone with egress. Go with your gut. Um, a focused infrared light beam projected hmm yes too sensible of an answer a focused infrared light beam is projected from an emitter and bounced off of a reflector um, laser tripwire light tripwire infrared linear beam sensors yeah these are tricky this is why you have to study for this <laughs> because like, you know what that is. You know, roughly how it works. You've seen lots of movies, but you know, infrared linear beam sensor sounds like something from Star Trek. Um, okay. Provide a quick way to disable a key by permitting one turn of the master key to change the lock. I, I'll just be honest. I have no idea what this is. Quick way to disable a key by permitting one turn of the master key to change the lock. Quick change, rekeying, instant keys. I I did not know what this was for your garage. Yeah, I don't know who's coming in from LinkedIn, but it just says LinkedIn user in the restream chat, so I don't know your name. But um, yeah, token. No, this is, well, and this is part of the thing. Token makes sense if this was all digital, but the CISSP covers physical security activities as well, which is why it gets into all of the security operations stuff. Because, um, yeah, if someone waltzes in and steals things, it's hard to have any digital protections in that. Technology that alerts organizations to adverse or unwanted activity. Um, I have my guess. I'm going to give a second for everyone else to answer, but... Uh, I was thinking intrusion detection. Yeah, intrusion detection system. IPS, intrusion prevention system. Yeah. Me and DPAC, same wavelength. So, all right. The party to party litigation costs resulting from its breach of warranties. Um, 
quite a turn from linear light beam systems. Um, part of your party litigation costs. Um, legal fees, breach of warranties. Cost, breach cost, claim cost, indemnification. Hmm. Party to party litigation costs resulting from its breach of warranties. I suppose that's accurate. But it is one of those answers that just makes you want to rub your face. Oh my gosh. Okay. Technology that monitors activity like an IDS, but will automatically take proactive preventative action if it detects unacceptable activity. Maybe that's maybe this is Deepak's answer. That this is the intrusion prevention system or automatic prevention system. IPS. Man, Deepak was right. Ahead of his time. All right. Currently, I think Deepak in the lead for uh, the mug with that IPS IDS. Anyone who can see into the future deserves a mug. Okay. Decoy servers or systems set up to gather information regarding an attacker or intruder into your system. Um, I know what this is. Pretty sure I know what this is. Yeah, Mike got it right, Honeypot. Honeypot. Centralized collection of honeypots and analysis tools. Um, honey net? I was going to say honey pit, but that's probably not accurate. Um, honey web. Uh, honey farm. Well, I think this has already humbled all of us. Honey farm is not what I was expecting. Honey net, I think. Man, that sounds better. Honey pie. Two or more honey pots on a network. Oh, well, this is definitely honey farm. Oh, this is the honey net. This is ridiculous. Two or more honey pots on a network. Let's go back. So, what was the different a centralized collection? I guess this analysis tools is what they make is the difference. So it's not just the honey pots, but it also has like centralized analysis tools. They're calling that a honey farm. But just two or more honey pots on a network is a honey net. Pretty soon it'll be like industrialized honey farming, so. Okay. Data that are dynamic and exist in running processes or other volatile locations that disappear in a relatively short time once the system is powered down. So this is volatile memory? Live evidence. Data that are dynamic. I'm just sitting here struck by how few context clues there were in that. Yeah, sometimes the terms are interchangeable, but in the actual exam, you know, oftentimes they just put them all in. They want you to make these very fine distinctions between IDS, IPS, and a frustration is that, you know, in practice, these are all very similar terms and people would know from context like what you were talking about. Um, but yeah okay so this is live evidence all right next states that when a crime is committed the perpetrators leave something behind and take something with them hence the exchange um honey farm includes tools yeah states that when a crime is committed the perpetrators leave something behind and take something with them hence the exchange just like the unwritten laws of piracy. Um, I'm honestly not sure. Crime's going to trace something? Trace evidence? Quid pro quo. Lokert's exchange principle. Hmm. Let's look that up. Okay. 
In the physical world, whenever perpetrators enter or leave a crime scene, they always leave something behind and take something with them. This is some Law & Order SVU uh, questions here. Same holds true in digital forensics. Register keys and log files. All right, there we go. We all learned something new today. All right, consists of a magnetically sensitive strip fused onto the surface of a PVC material like a credit card. This is magnetic stripe. Magnetic stripe cards. All right. How's he? All right, a lock or latch that is recessed into the edge of a door rather than being mounted to its surface. So instead of surface mounted, flush mounted, um, guessing. Mortise lock. Hmm. This is great. So far, we've covered legal terms. Uh, cybersecurity terms, physical security terms, and now carpentry terms, as well as uh, Lockard's principle of evidence exchange, uh, which I guess is uh, physical evidence terms. Okay. Accounts granting greater privileges than normal user accounts when it is necessary for the user to have greater control over the system, but where administrative access is not required. Um granted greater privileges than normal user accounts. Um, heightened uh, super user, local admin. It says, it says no admin access. I would have thought local admin. Power users. I feel like super user should have qualified, but no, power user. Okay identifies any unacceptable deviation from expected behavior based on known network protocols. Behavior, user behavior analytics? Hey, Deepak got super user, good job. Identifies any unacceptable deviation of expected behavior based on known network protocol. Yeah, I would think um, user behavior analytics. Anomaly detection. Man, Tupac's killing it. Protocol anomaly based IDS. Hmm. All right. Use embedded antenna wires connected to a chip within the card through RF. Um, so RF is radio frequency. So is this system on a chip? Integrated antenna? I don't know. Let's just see here. Proximity card. Oh. So they're talking about like an RFID, like an active RFID card. Hmm. All right. Essential activities to protect business information and can be established in compliance with laws, regulations, or corporate governance. This feels like a legal term. Like it's like do, do care basic protections, almost knocked my water over. Let's see, records and information management. Hmm. All right, that's what it is. All right, the measure of the existing magnetic field on the media after degaussing. The measure, um, field strength? Uh, probably some fancy physics term. Remnants. Oh, shoot. This came up in one of the other question sets, one of the other bodies of knowledge, remnants. Okay. A lock or latch typically mounted on the surface of a door, typically associated with a deadbolt type of lock. So we had mortise lock already. I would think just surface mount, but... Anyone good at carpentry? Hmm. Rim lock. So mortise lock and rim lock. Okay. A form of software virtualization that lets programs and processes run in their own isolated virtual environment. 
isolate a virtual line. So I'm thinking containerization, software those programs on the virtual environment. I don't know if it's virtual machines or containerization. Hmm. I doubt they're looking for Kubernetes, but you know, sandboxing. Uh, wow, I really don't like that. <laughs> I don't think, I don't, I feel like that term is not accurate at all in terms of modern computing. Yeah, containers, VM. I don't think pass would be right platform as a service, but yeah, I think sandboxing just in general isn't virtualization. Like it's an entirely different system or it's a different setup or it's keeping things separate, but wow. Okay. Moving on. A group of technologies which aggregate information about access controls and selected system activity to store for analysis and correlation. I feel like this is analytics collection, logging. Just Splunk, people just say Splunk. <laughs> I don't know. Um, group of technologies, aggregate information about access controls, selected. Maybe, maybe they're going for SIM? Let's try SIM. Hey, security information and event management. We got it. I feel like we accomplished something there. That was good. Take a deep breath and just let the acronym flow through you. All right. Accounts used to provide privileged access used by system services and core applications. So I think this is system account, which is what I had pitched way back before power users and before administrative users. So I'm going to try that. Service accounts. See, now we're, now we're warmed up. This is good. Credential cards with one or more microchip processing that accepts or processes information and can be contact or contactless. One or more microchips. Are they CAC cards? All right, Deepak got service account. Sometimes I wish this was a Zoom call so, so that the answers could be coming in faster. Credential cards. I think this is cat cards, but that may just be what I was familiar with at the DOD, at the little cat cards. Um, smart cards. Hmm. Smart cards. All right. I, I miss that because I, I need to be smarter. And that analyzes event data by comparing it to typical known or predicted traffic profiles in an effort to find potential security breaches event data so we already said anomaly detection for the other one which was good but now i'm thinking analyzes event data by compared to typical known or predicted traffic profiles anomaly prediction statistical anomaly based ids definitions yeah some of these i don't even word it as questions the science of hiding information Thing in steganography, though usually that's just like in images. I don't know if that's specific to images or if that's like anything. Hmm, obfuscation that's not a bad guess, but I would think like, yeah, maybe steganography sounds like a dinosaur, it's hard to hide dinosaurs. I make these dumb jokes about like dinosaurs and stuff, but it really does help me remember the terms. So, you know, use your own dinosaur related metaphors and mnemonics. All right. Identifies any unacceptable deviation from expected behavior based on actual traffic structure. You don't have to be so surprised I got one right. Like it's not even a broken clock is right twice a day. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Any unacceptable deviation from expected behavior based on actual traffic structure. Um, so I feel this is like another IDS type. And so we've already done like statistical anomaly. We've done um, 
behavioral anomaly. What could this be? Unacceptable deviation of expected behavior. Expectation based. Um, traffic anomaly. Actual traffic. Okay. Traffic anomaly ideas. Send induced radio frequency signals down a cable that is attached to the fence fabric. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if I'd say CISSP studying is the way to wake up, but I still got to do it. Send induced radio frequency signals down a cable that is attached to the fence fabric. Time domain reflect on. I was uh, I was not going to guess that one. Time domain reflect on. Okay. Um, nice work. Okay. Just as a review, and because I think we have a decent amount of time, um, let's move on to the next one, and we'll come back to this. Okay, so this is domain eight, which is software security. Software development security, which I'm excited about because um, software developer and... Um, I like it. And this is mostly the area in which I practice security. So, um, excited, but I'm thinking I'm probably still going to fail at most of this. So, you know, please keep me honest and keep putting in, uh, answers. Okay. So ActiveX data objects, uh, this is Microsoft technology for doing data communications. Um, though maybe not used so much anymore. High level interface for all kinds of data. All right, cool. All right, maturity model focused on quality management processes and five maturity levels that contain several key practices within each maturity level. Um, I do not know. I'm trying to see if there's any other developers in here. I'm like, oh yeah, that maturity model. Um, CMM, Capability Maturity Model for Software, or Software CMM. All right. I've heard of the CMM because um, a lot of the government um, contracts are starting to use that as a requirement. I didn't actually know what it stood for, just that like, oh yeah, CMM. A set of standards that addresses the need for interoperability between hardware and software products. So anytime I hear standards, I think ISO, need for software, ISO standards? Oh, the CORBA, Common Object Request Broker Architecture. Right, hardware and software, wow. I would not have, uh, I would not have described it that way, but okay. A program written with functions and intent to copy and disperse itself without the knowledge and cooperation of the owner or user of the computer. Um, a virus? Uh, I think that's mostly from the disperse itself. Like, lots of programs could do lots of other things. Like, if it was just ransomware. A worm? I think a worm is specific to network. Like if this copied itself to a USB drive and then you took that USB drive to the next computer, that'd be a virus, but not a worm. At least that's how I remember them making the distinction. Yeah, a virus. Though tab 135, good guess. Um, monitoring and managing changes to a program or documentation. I would think this is change management. Configuration management. Oh, they're still in configuration management. Who would have guessed? All right. An information flow that is not controlled by a security control. Yeah, CM, 8-bit, that was good. An information control flow that is not controlled by a security control. Unmanaged flow, unrestricted data flow, covert channel. Hmm. All right. I'm making the AI, but it's not working can someone suggest, I think is what it said, a best software for coding? Um, not exactly what we're covering today, but uh, I did actually just for fun do Google's uh, AI course, which was really approachable because um, it all runs out of uh, just like Python notebooks. So you don't really even need to download anything. Um, and it uses their back end for stuff. Um, it was pretty cool. 
All right. All right. Conversion of electronic data into another form called ciphered text, which cannot be easily understood by anyone except authorized parties. Um, I would think this is encryption. Yeah, there we go, encryption. The practice of examining large databases in order to generate new information. This is an analysis, um, reporting, examining larger, investigation. I'm trying to think if there's some like twist in this big data analysis. But what if, I guess it, it does say large databases. Hmm. Data mining. data mining I feel like if it's already in the database as you aren't mining it <laughs> you're just like querying it but again a suite of application programs that typically manages large structured sets of persistent data uh, data management applications maybe this is databases application database management systems DBMS yeah Describes the relationship between the data elements and provides a framework for organizing the data. Um, this would be, I'm thinking the schema is what they're going for. The database model. Which is true, but I would call the database model the schema. But uh, database model, I schema may be very specific to the technologies I've worked with and maybe isn't actually the most generic term, which is probably what they're going for. Hmm. Okay, data model. An approach based on lean and agile principles in which business owners and the development operations and quality assurance departments collaborate. Lean and agile principles. Um, I would think this is agile development is what they're going for, but I'm trying to think if there's Again, like an even more generic term than Agile. Splash water up my nose. Um, I'm going to go with just Agile. DevOps. Well, lean and Agile principles and development. I wouldn't have thought quality assurance departments be part of DevOps, but uh, honestly, I've heard worse definitions of DevOps. Um, so that's pretty good. Okay. A record of the events occurring within an organization's systems. 8-bit objects to DevOps as the, the answer. I don't, I don't know. Got a better definition of DevOps? I know everyone with DevOps in their title loves to fight about what the definition of DevOps is. Usually it's like whatever they're working on at that very moment. Um, a record of the events occurring within organizations, systems, and networks. I would think this is the logs. Yeah, logs. Okay. A management technique that simultaneously integrates all essential acquisition activities through the use of multi multidisciplinary teams to optimize the design, manufacturing, and supportability processes. All right, Max said syslog, which I think is probably too specific for this, that that's a specific implementation of like dumping everything out to, to syslog. Um, but what if it's like, you know, what if it's Apache logs? Like those aren't syslogs. I mean, so it's just logs. And there's a, I'm not trying to call Max out. Thank you for putting an answer in Max. More just that the test, really wants you to think in like that management way where it's more generic, um, where it could be like any system ever had, could write out a log. Um, simultaneously integrates all essential, I, I don't know. Um, management technique. Integrated product and process development, IPPD. I didn't know that. That's uh, it's a new one on me. IPPD. Okay. Development models that allow for successive refinements of requirements, design, and coding. I think this is probably Agile. I don't know. Also, there's a dog barking outside about Agile. So, 
iterative models, development models that allow for successive. I, I guess that's true. Okay. Good enough. Mathematical, statistical, and visualization method of identifying valid and useful patterns in data. So, data analysis, statistical, and visualization. It has visualization in it. Data reporting, maybe? Now I feel like I scared Max off with talking about syslog. Okay, mathematical, I think data reporting. Knowledge discovery and databases. Well, that's just ridiculous. Knowledge discovery and databases. What else are you going to discover in there? Okay, information about the data. I think this is metadata. Metadata. So honestly, I would probably say metadata. I don't know if that's because I'm from the Midwest or not, but I say data more than data. Okay, a form of rapid prototyping that requires strict time limits on each phase and relies on tools that enable quick development. Rapid prototyping. I would think that was just rapid prototyping. Strict time limits on each phase and relies on tools to enable quick development. Proof of concept? I don't know. Rapid application development. Strict time limits on each phase. Wow. This is one of those ones where you just think like, that is not the accepted definition of that. Like in practice, like, yeah, we're doing rapid application development. I don't think anyone pulls out a stopwatch for each phase. There's just tools that do that. Weird. The level of confidence the software is free from vulnerabilities, either intentionally designed in the software or accidentally inserted at a time during its life cycle and that it functions in the intended manner. I think this is maturity. The level of confidence, maturity level? Software assurance. Wouldn't have thought that that's... So I guess you achieve software assurance through the maturity model? Mm -hmm. Allows the operating system to provide well-defined and structured access to processes that need to use resources according to a controlled and tightly managed schedule. Well-defined and structured. APIs? Time multiplexing which no one has used except for mainframes for 30 years. Time multiplexing, though, I guess, <laughs> like so many of these, I'm just like, I guess in a certain line, if I squint and twist my head just right, that's the answer. Takes advantage of the dependency on the timing of events that take place in a multitasking operating system. Dependency, preemptive multitasking, Time of check, time of use attacks. Hmm. Dependency on the timing events. Okay. All right. The collection of all the hardware, software, and firmware within a computer system that contains all elements of the system responsible for supporting the security policy and the isolation of objects. Collection. It's the system and security system? Trusted computing bases. Yeah, didn't didn't know that one either. A developmental model in which each phase contains a list of activities that must be performed and documented before the next phase begins. Is this iterative or waterfall list of activities? Waterfall development model, not the iterative. Okay, well. I was really looking forward to that, and then it turns out to have kicked me around the, the stream. Um, well, uh, I think we're going to end it there uh, today. So just wanted to say thanks to everyone for joining in. Thanks to everyone who uh, shouted out answers. Um, yeah. Hey, boy, I've never heard of most of these things myself. Um, or it, they're used in such an odd, precise way that is not the common practice, which is why we need to study if we're going to pass the CISSP. Um, so I'm going to say today's winner is Deepak. Uh, Deepak, 
great job answering stuff. It seems like you have studied quite a bit more than me. Um, hope you're working on your CSP and you get to take it soon. Uh, to get the mug, if you could uh, email me at mbuckby at veronis.com. Uh, we'll get that shipped out. Um, that's it. Hope everyone has a great weekend. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.